What we're doing is not just inspiring each other in the room. What we're doing is inspiring an entire industry. I felt like a kid the night before Christmas last night knowing what we are going to experience over the next couple of days. I knew these would be incredible presentations, but the fact that they have gone and put so much effort and energy into this, and each one of them in their own unique style, I had my front runner, and I'm now starting to question myself. The regional artists blew me away. Everybody put together their different stories, so I think that is really important because it gives you a little bit of an insight and helps you understand what's actually going through their minds during that installation process. I was totally thinking it was just gonna be a photo gallery of just pretty pictures after pretty pictures pictures after pretty pictures and these guys told their story and like where they came from and how they got into this and every presentation was better than the next it's gonna be so hard to figure out which one of these guys deserves to be on top because right now like my mind is spinning we're gonna build a pondless waterfall the best way to learn anything is to teach it we are rocking and rolling on this pond At 3.30 tomorrow afternoon, one of you guys, one of the eight finalists is gonna be nominated, voted on by far the most vetted out in the history Aquascape Artist of the Year. First up, we got Bill Seeds from Seeds of Nature. He's out of the Oregon area there. I've been following Bill for the last few years because that's when I met Bill. So in a short amount of time, Bill went to his very first Aquascape Academy, has since been to every other training event you could possibly go to, and now he's sitting in a room with the most talented people in the entire world, volunteering himself to go first. I cannot wait to see what Bill Seeds has to say. A man who works with his hands is a laborer. A man who works with his hands and his brain is a craftsman. But a man who works with his hands and his brain and his heart is an artist. This business taught me how to use my hands. It taught me how to use my brain. And now I'm starting to learn how to use my heart. So the way I got started was started watching videos. You know, when I was a kid, I loved aquariums. I loved animals. And so I started watching aquarium videos, then I found Aquascape. So I decided to go to the training event and I started to learn more and I, I fell in love with it automatically. I just, I wanted to build water features. I wanted to build waterfalls. I wanted to build ponds. I wanted to take care of fish. You know, I wanted to own my own time and I wanted to actually feel good about a business. Something that I can wake up and be like, yes, I'm excited to go do this tomorrow. Uh, it's not, I wake up and like, oh, I have to do this to get paid. This type of work is so rewarding because no one needs a water feature right like they need they need plumbing they need hvac systems in their house people that are buying these features this is a dream for them initially when i first started you know the artistry i guess you would call it but i created a philosophy the acronym ponds it's a written way for me to express and teach other people about my own philosophy ponds p-o-n-d-s p passion and purpose passion and purpose is rooted in the natural world o originality and vision i strive to create highly original and functional pieces, right? With the vision that they replicate, not just nature, but also some type of context, like a, an emotion or a spiritual focus, something like celebration of life or a symbol of struggle, failure, and nature connection. Obviously everything I do is rooted in my deep love for nature. That means that I wanna build highly ecologically friendly features, thank you Aquascape, that actually help, you know, the native wildlife and give back to the local ecosystem. D, design and storytelling. Trying to design things that are unique, that tell a story. And then S, sustainability. Sustainability being that water ecology is so important to understand. Poor water ecology management. It all ties into to soil, to how we farm. It's not just in the backyards. Local pollinators or birds don't have places to, to get water. It, it's a, a, a worldwide issue of poor resource management. And so with this philosophy, it kind of sums up everything that I really believe as my artistic approach and it's more than just art, it's a functional way. I get to use my hands to actually build something that makes myself and other people 
happy. I think me winning, it would just mean that all of the hard work and sacrifices that I put in the past five years actually, I mean, they already mean something obviously because I have a business and you know, I'm successful, but it would be validation that my choice was correct and that I do have you know, an eye for design. I, I do have a vision that's more than just like, oh, I can build a couple waterfalls or yeah, I can make a pond look nice. It's more than that. It's, it's that the current artist of the year, the philosopher kings, if you will, they think that I am up to snuff and that I am ready to represent the tribe. Next, we got Chris and Drake Feldner from Natural Scapes out of South Carolina. I've been watching these guys. These guys, I would say, are the king of rec ponds. They're doing some stuff that is mind blowing. I cannot wait to see what kind of stuff they're gonna share that's different from all the stuff I've seen on Facebook. This is gonna be awesome. All I gotta say is please share what you do because I'm gonna learn from it. But this tribe is bigger than all of us in this room. When all of y'all are successful, everybody out there is successful, everybody grows together. First rec pond I sold was because I shared his YouTube video. So I kind of got my start when I was, I think I was 14 or 15 years old. My dad had sold a couple and uh, we went out on a limb and started Natural Scapes. It was just us two, we were renting equipment, we were brand new to it, but our whole goal from day one was to be the best of the best. And we wanted to make everything look as natural as possible, as great as possible, to blow the client out of the water, A, but B, and the main thing, was blow ourselves out of the water. We wanted to step back at the end of a project and just be blown away. It's always about how good we can make it. It's never mediocre. It's never just trying to set rocks, make a, make a waterfall to get a paycheck and leave. It's always how cool we can make it in the space all around it. Not just the water feature, but the entire space. Being an artist was something that I didn't really expect to do for a living. I got one taste of it and it just went from there. I cannot sit at a desk and do the same thing every day. I've gotta be doing something different and that's what really made me ultimately start this. But it completely took off from the first time we flipped a waterfall on that I had any hands-on access and just seeing all of the movement in the water and what we could do is meant to be art. It has grown in, it has been embedded in my mind from my father in art. It's a challenge some days, I'm not gonna lie. I love what I do because I get to do it with my father. I don't work a day in my life. Sometimes it's a little bit hot and a little bit sweaty, but that's what I love to do and that's why I love to do it and I wouldn't change a thing about it. Nobody's a competitor in this. We're all competitors, but nobody's competing. It's all about lifting each other up, making sure the next person in line is better than you. And that is one thing about this trade and about how Aquascape especially. I don't think there's any other industry in the world besides Aquascape that is focused on bringing the next person up better than yourself. It's never about being the best, I don't think. It's about getting better than you were the day before. And so this award would mean to us that we were better than we were yesterday. Next, we got Sean Frost from Naturescape out of New Hampshire. I've known Sean, gosh, it feels like more than half my life. Uh, I know for a fact he was an integral part of my build at my house. So I've known Sean for a long time. I owe Sean big. I cannot wait to see uh, his presentation because he's been doing some unbelievable stuff for the last couple of years. When I'm hired to build a project like this, I feel like I'm being commissioned to create a work of art. It's very much like a, a painter commissioned to paint a portrait of somebody. It's a very intimate relationship between the person that's commissioning you 
and the artist that's creating the work of art. The way I get started in this industry I actually started in high school working at a pet store. You know, the guy actually became a mentor, but in the uh, short term, he uh, asked me if I would build these water features outside of work, buy the product through him, and I started doing it. It just evolved from there, you know? So Aquascape came into my journey when I went to build a large water feature. One of the catalogs had come in at the shop, at the store, and I picked up that catalog and I was looking through it and I was like, wow, this is a complete system. And up until then, everything was kind of piecemeal, different manufacturers, but there wasn't a good system. And it wasn't too long after that I got a call for a, the largest job I had done to that date. For the next year, I was building that water feature on the side because I was still doing you know, my regular job. I sold that job for $10,000, thought I was a millionaire. It took me a year to build that baby. Unfortunately, early on, I didn't see the value in you know coming to the events. And then Aquascapes changed how they were doing things and they you know brought in distributors. And we went down to an event there and we started meeting the people in this tribe. That was the turning point in my career, I guess you would say. Before you know it, we started traveling and that's where we really gained the most experience because we were working with different people, different materials every day, you know, constantly changing stuff and everybody's got something to teach you. I just think back to all the people that helped me along the way. You never get there on your own. To me, it's more about that journey. In the end, the most important part is what emotion you're evoking from your customer. Because artistry is certainly a key component of that. How have you affected that person? And that, I think, is how you change people's lives. When you can bring something like that into their life and you see the smile come up across their face, then you know that you nailed it. That's really what it's about, is bringing that joy. The presentations that these artists put together were phenomenal. And I'm sitting there looking at these, thinking to myself, you know, anybody in this room could win this easily. The depth in, of each person in that room is just phenomenal. In the end, really, you have to be happy for whoever wins that. All right, next we got Byron and James from Streamwork Designs out of Vancouver. Byron and James took over Marcel's company. Marcel was doing really, really incredible projects. I know he was a huge inspiration to these two young guys, and they've really just carried the torch. I mean, without skipping a beat, they're following right in Marcel's footsteps. I know the guys are studying everybody else's work out there all the time which is why they were nominated by their peers from their area. They are doing incredible stuff and they're getting at it. That's really inspiring even to somebody like me. It's just so cool to be standing up here in front of, like Byron said, just legends in the industry. Yeah. Really appreciate it. My goal, and I think many of you guys might share the same goal, is to inspire. I think that to me is what an artist of the year truly is. Someone that, one, creates beautiful water features, but also inspires. Our company started in 2008. My business partner, Marcel, is no longer with the company. He started as a landscaping company. We moved into water features. We only do water features since then. At that point, James is working with us. He's taught me things. I teach him things. <laughs> we kind of bounce a lot of off each other, but totally. uh, he is the artist here. We both are, but uh, He's building a lot of these things and that's our team. When we got announced as regional finalists at Pondemonium this year, I was blown away, really. Like, it, to be recognized by all our peers as Canadian regional artists, it was, it was amazing. It was a huge honor and actually, at the last Pondemonium, it was actually one of my personal goals to try and get to Artist of the Year, even if it's regionals, it was just such an honor, it's just incredible. The Aquascape CAC tribe is a family that I never thought that I needed and they are fundamental to our business, I would say, and to my life, really. They're more than a networking community, it's their family. It's like we're all one giant company. Even though we're in our little separate areas, I think they help, they motivate us. We learn so much from each other, no matter if they're artists of the years or, or, or guys who are, you know, just getting started, you can still learn from them. And I hope that we can offer some things to the other people in our community. A lot of them are just huge mentors to me. There's just so much inspiration that we gather from all these other guys in the community. It's just incredible. Stay focused on what your purpose is here. If you love building waterfalls and ponds, stick to that and strive to be the best. Find a mentor. I had a mentor. He learned from the other artists of the years and you learn from them, you copy them, 
you emulate their exact works and you end up finding your own piece of the art, but you can see a little bit of theirs in, in your work and, and you learn so much about business and art through them, so mentor is key. I feel like I have so much to learn from so many other guys here and that's really the next step is just to continue to learn different aspects of the job and how to continue growing. So to be voted as Artist of the Year would be one of the top goals in my life and business, I think. That would be a, an honor as well as a huge accomplishment personally and in the business. So I'm not going to expect anything, but you know, it's, there's some <laughs> tough competition like I said before and we'll see where it goes. Next we got Ben Pemberton with Shade Landscape. Him and his brother Joe. Joe's on the business side, Ben's on this side. I think that's how it works, right? They're so new. Ben's here, he's gonna lead the charge on this presentation. They are the first in that UK area up there, nominated by their peers for this prestigious award. I will tell you this, they're bringing in like a totally different level of detail work. Like their detail work is insane. So I can't wait to see what Ben and I'm sure his brother Joe help put together a little bit of a presentation, so looking forward to this one. True artists are always pushing boundaries and limits to come up with new design ideas whilst also emerging existing ideas to come up with something that is bespoke and unique. So I believe that art requires an audience, and without that audience, our art and our passion and our growth has been lost. So I got started in this industry due to me and my brother were interested in aquariums for a long time, and we were always looking at YouTube for doing external aquascaping. But for years we couldn't get the products in the UK, so we sort of shelved the idea. And then one day we looked back into it and we found that we could get the aquascape products in our next door village, which is just a random thing. It was right there. Aquascape really, I was watching the YouTube for years and I was always wondering how I could adapt the same sort of artistic approach as what I saw on YouTube. So I met Mark Wilson, who has done a huge amount of promotion for local contractors and pushed the brand of Aquascape. Without Mark Wilson, there wouldn't be really Aquascape in the UK at this stage. To get on this sort of artistic level, there's many people that have inspired me. Certainly people that I've watched on YouTube from the US. My latest projects have been really inspired by aquarium macroscapers. I'm quite fascinated by taking certain concepts from aquarium aquascapers and, and putting them concepts into a garden. Certainly on my latest projects, I was starting to think about how can I really turn the heads of aquarium aquascapers and put them concepts into a garden. To be honest with you, the elation of winning um, an artistry award is an amazing feeling, but shortly after that, you start to realize that there is a responsibility that comes with having an artistry recognition. That's quite a nerve wracking thing, but actually as time goes on, you start to realize that if you become recognized in your trade, you have a responsibility back in your country to inspire people and push the aquascaping way. I think social media is really important because you need to, you need to show people what you're actually building. And also, I think if you want to become an artist of the year, you've got to hit something that, which is quite unique. So when I build a water feature, the artistry for me really is on them particular projects. You have to think about something that hasn't really been hit before. Then you can really sort of develop your artistry from that. Next up is Dan Taylor with Tailored Landscapes, all the way from literally the farthest point possible from St. Charles, Illinois. That's right, Australia. He flew out here with his good friend Patrick Hanley, a past artist of the year. I've been watching again, Dan, um, like so many of these guys on Facebook, really looking forward to sit down and getting in the mind of a creative man like him. He does an enormous amount of collaborations out there because they tackle some of the largest features I've ever seen. Can't wait to see what Dan's got in store for us. Well, it's always me on the job site. I like to keep it small that way. I've got control of of the art and, and what, what it is that comes out because it is art and it's kind of, yeah, I find it hard to give that responsibility to someone else. Um, as, as good as these guys are and we, we really collaborate and we all work well together, it's, I don't think I could not be on the job site. So it's um, work staying small is kind of 
works for me and that's kind of happy for it to stay that way. The way I got started in the industry I suppose was through Patrick from uh, Waterscapes Australia. I was a landscaper for a long time before that, maybe 15 years or so and then I started working with Waterscapes Australia. From there, yeah, I learned on the ground, you know, I was learning from the bottom up, um, but having some skills as a landscaper, which really helped. After that, Patrick is one that actually kind of pushed me to start my own business. And he said, you know, you should be doing it. All these other CACs in Australia are doing it and, and you should be doing it yourself. So I uh, took it from there and um, and went off by myself. And um, I guess in that way, it helped that I, I never really built a bad water feature for myself. You know, some would start with the, the some, some not so good water features and build their way up. I had that head start by working with waterscapes that I, I never really had a bad water feature that I did from the start so that, that helped by having that learning curve with one of the best in Australia. So we take our time with every job and we make it as best as we can. It's all about the quality. It's not about pumping it out quantity wise or you know money wise even. It's like even if we're falling short on man hours we'll, we'll just put in as much time as it takes. It's all about being as good as your last job you know and if you're your last job was no good, well that's that's gonna represent you badly. So just you know, quality over quantity for sure. I am a landscaper, I'm a waterproofer, I'm a machine operator, but then we put it all together in a way that it, it is art, it's it's artistic, it's, it's a way to express ourselves with the water, with the gardens and with the landscape that is gonna produce a beautiful outcome. It's gonna be there for years to come. It's you know you're creating an ecosystem and people want that. They want to bring the, the wildlife in to their house like they want to bring it closer can interact with it all so it's not only bringing that in to the landscape in a way that looks nice but but making it artistic and, and making certain ways that it blends with the environment and you blend the natural with the formal even in many different ways um, but it's, it's making it a way that it's aesthetically pleasing it's creative we do put everything into every job we make it a piece of art and where we want to walk away from every job happy with with what we've produced I'm glad someone else has recognized that you know it's been nice to be recognized by our peers by by everyone else around and you know be somewhat you know up here representing Australia Next up is Matt Heiner from Heiner Outdoor Living. Matt is what, uh, what how, how they, how you say the complete package, right? Matt, you've got it all. You, you know how to build, you know how to design, you bring those whole outdoor living spaces together. So really looking forward to getting to know what's in between Matt's two ears and uh, seeing his presentation. You know, there still has to be a sales process. There still needs to be a passing of the reins and there has to be some collaboration with your team so you can set proper expectations because if you're not painting the right picture or you're painting too nice of a picture, you could end up with some frustrations. And to me, the design process is really something that allows me to set the bar high so we can over deliver. I got my start in high school, more so doing landscaping and the landscaping just kind of progressed into when clients would ask for a water feature in their yard. That quickly turned into a ooh moment for me, just really just prompted a lot of like excitement and the opportunity to express some creativity in a way that I didn't get to with just regular grass and plants and regular old stuff. I want to say I built my first water feature in 2004, shortly after I graduated high school, so 20 years ago and instantly got the bug. And so anytime I would have a client or opportunity to sell a landscape project, I was always pitching a water feature and just kind of snowballed from there. My start with Aquascape began shortly after I had started my business. As far as being a part of the tribe, everybody's so available. I've done collaborations with Alan Decker. He's flown in from New York and we did a project together this past August that I had sold and organized. That was an out of town job for us. And so getting that one-on-one -on -one experience with him was amazing because because I got to learn tricks that I never would have learned otherwise. Just being here and being in this room with all these people that I've literally looked up to my entire career and they have really helped shape who I am as an artist and who I am as a, you know, just as a business person in general too. And it's not just me, it's it's the people on my team. They watch their YouTubes, they consume all of their stuff. So this isn't a Matt Heiner award. This would be, uh, you know, winning regional artist of the year was a company award. I always thrive on being able to contribute and I'm kind of in that middle age. There's some people that are younger than me, at least in their careers or in age, and there's people that are older. I'm kind of in that mix where I get to experience both being influenced 
and being an influencer on some of these. And it's kind of cool just watching the baton get passed, you know, and just learning to give back. If you're gonna be an artist and you really wanna be recognized, you really gotta find your own path. That doesn't mean don't look at other people's work and not get inspired. It means that you use those things to your advantage and put your own twist on it. To win the International Artist of the Year would just kind of mean everything. And I really kind of found myself in the landscaping, but more so the, the water feature industry. And so to be recognized as one of the best of the best in the world would just, it would really mean probably everything. Next, we got Dean Pepito with Aquatica. I've known Dean for as long as I can remember. Dean was uh, kind of one of the forefathers of this whole pond building stuff. Like I remember doing Build the Pond Days way back when, and he was at some of those very first projects that we were building as we were teaching people. In fact, he's been around so long, they call him the Pond Father. It's about time you're sitting here with all of us because you've, you've earned it. Can't wait to see what your presentation looks like. Part of creating a piece of water feature art starts with a concept and a, and a drawing and that way the client can get kind of a, a vision uh, for what's going to actually happen on the job site so this is a, a springboard for ultimately what is to become the piece of art I started out in the landscape industry when I was a teenager. My wife and I started a small landscape company at the time, and we basically grew up together in the industry, went to school for landscape design. The rest is history. You know, I, I basically was known as, as the water guy in my community and in my area, and was really attracted to, to that niche of, of the landscape industry. That's how we got started. Just took off like a rocket ship back in those days. People didn't know what water features were, the way we were building them, and the way I Aquascape was building up. It was really the new trend in the industry. And now it's a mainstay. Now it's taken for granted. But at the time, it was like, holy cow, you could have this in your backyard. We just kept building ever since. Uh, 23 years later, here we are. The artistry of a water feature is so important to what we do, you know, the joy it can bring to people's lives, you know, through water. So I always try to tell our guys that it's important to tell a story and create a scene for that customer. And it's not necessarily about the water feature itself, it's about that feeling. It's about bringing that element of water to a landscape and the sound and the movement of that water. And, and that can bring a lot of emotion and a lot of enjoyment, just in that atmosphere. So what we like to do is, is bring that to people's lives and that's through the art of water. Of course, we like to make a living at it and, and we're successful, you know, pond builders. But at the end of the day, it is about, you know, enhancing people's lives. We are a wonderful business, but we want to really elevate our, our artistry. And I think that becoming a Midwest uh, Artist of the Year person, I think that that's really uh, reminded us of, hey, you know, we, we have a lot to learn yet. We have a, a lot of growth to do yet. So it's a new challenge for us. And I think we're gonna enjoy that. This is really a, a pretty neat deal to be a part of this uh, particular group so it's it's just a privilege it's a it's an honor to be here among this type of talent and this type of crowd so I couldn't be happier you know I've had a long rewarding career building water features and, and doing landscape design and things like that this is a, a good cherry on the Sunday I guess you could put it you know for Aquatica and myself it would be a highlight of my career The presentations have been a little bit different, which makes it nice because not only do we get to see the work that all these guys are doing, we also get to see their personalities and how they present. Off the very first one, I was inspired immediately. Getting the deep dive into like what all these people and their companies are about is helping me formulate my decision on who I'm going to vote for. Some guys are more about where they came from and how they got here. Some guys are more about just projects and different, it's all different styles. If you can see a lot of references and things they've picked up along the way, but who's doing what? The bar is so high. Like, these guys are good. It's gonna be really tough to yeah. pick someone out. This is a pretty cool moment. These guys work their ass off. They dedicate their lives and their careers to making the better water features. They're an inspiration to all three of us. So I would love to be able to nominate every single person here for this award, but only one person can get it. And who is that person? 